for my portable amateur radio operating, especially my parks on the air activations, you know, many times I'll use uh, vertical antennas, like a shortened vertical or a, a collapsible whip, that will go on a mount similar to this. I've got a number of different mounts. Uh, this particular one can be you know, articulated a couple of ways and clamped to you know, a park bench or a picnic table or something like that. Now, regardless of the mount, whether it's something like this or a tripod or something like that, one thing they all have in common is they'll need some kind of a ground system, either ground radials or something like that. The ones that I use will typically have a male disconnect you know, mounted to the clamp itself, and that's what I use to connect my radial system. Now I played around with a Faraday cloth, or a lot of people call it the magic carpet, like a conductive fabric that you can lay on the ground. But I found, for me, a lot of times I'm operating in an area where the ground isn't flat, uh, or it's windy or something like that. So laying out a fabric and getting it to lay flat enough and, and putting rocks on it to hold it in place takes longer than just deploying some wire radials. So I typically go with wire radials. Now probably the most efficient way to use a wire ground radial is to do tuned radials for the bands you want to operate on. But again, I, I want to be a little bit flexible in terms of how I operate. I'm not too worried about having a little extra loss, so I'll just typically deploy something that's easy and effective. And for me, that's you know typically four ground radial wires attached to the ground of the mount. So while most of my mounts have got this kind of uh, male disconnect you know, screwed to the mount, whether it's you know this one here or some of the others that I have. So what I want to do today is show you the uh, four-wire ground radial system that I use because it's very, something that's very easy to make and very inexpensive to make. Now rather than using four separate individual wires, I actually use ribbon wire that's uh, kind of split out into groups, so they're little flat ribbons. And I found that these are very lightweight. They are pretty resistant to tangling. They can be deployed very easily. Uh, and uh, to me, almost a little bit easier to deal with than just four individual wires. So let me show you how I make this uh, ground radio kit. Now I'll typically start with a 12 conductor ribbon cable, uh, like this one here. Sometimes you can get it in, you know, in wider, you know, more conductors, or you can use even less conductors. It depends on what you like to do. The 12 conductor one allows you to split it up into four groups of three, and I found that to be pretty well effective. I've also made them with uh, some 10 conductor, where I've done two groups of three and two groups of two. And that works out well also. Now the first thing you need to do is strip uh, the cable off so you can put the uh, connector on the end. And I found it's a uh, ribbon cable can be kind of tricky to strip. But what I found that since I'm going to be splitting this up into multiple strips anyway, I found that it's easier to strip it in the smaller groups. If someone's got a really good tip on how to strip ribbon cable, you know, please put a comment in down below. I'd love to hear it. So what I typically will do then for this is start by breaking this up into my groups of three. So if I grab three conductors here and strip, oh, that's two. Let's see, grab one more there. So grab my three conductors. So there's my first strip right there of three. And I'll break this up into four groups of three you know, for my uh, final radial kit. So there we go. So there's my, my four groups of three. We'll strip them back a little bit further. Ultimately I'm going to tear these all the way back to make my four individual wires. But let's just start with this to do the initial stripping to get the insulation off. Now again, if someone's come up with a better way to strip these multi-conductor cables, again, love to hear it. But here's what I've been doing. I've been using a razor knife like this and uh, you know, put a bend in the cable like so and just very lightly score the conductors and if you do it really lightly you can kind of tell when you start to hit the, the wire and once I'll do that I'll roll around either end just so that the, the cut gets continued around the edge of the wire okay and then I'll reverse the bend and then you'll find that notch again and then continue the cut on the other side there we go and once you've got that cut done all the way down, you can actually do a little bit of just working of the plastic to loosen it all up, and then typically grab and start to separate the insulation from the wires with your fingers. And then once you've got that, you can just pull this off, and now you've got the, the conductors there ready to be twisted together. You just have to repeat this on the other three groups. Now it may take a few tries to get the hang of getting all these stripped without uh, losing too many of the strands of uh, conductor. But once you've got them and you've got them all twisted together, then you want to kind of stack them all on top of each other 
uh, to make a kind of a, a almost like a square cable and twist the leads together. All right, so when you're done, you should have something that looks kind of like this, all twisted together at one end. So the next thing you'll want to do is uh, just slip some heat shrink over it. Uh, either a 3 16th or a quarter inch heat shrink we should probably do it. I'm using a marine grade heat shrink that's got an adhesive inside that will act as a good strain relief uh, after I get it all assembled. So we'll just slip that over the wires before we uh, crimp on the connector. Okay, so after trimming the conductors to length, we'll slip on the, uh, the female disconnect. I uh, happen to be using some insulated ones here, but you could use a non-insulated one as well. Uh, we'll just slip that over in place. Try and tuck some of that insulation uh, into the end of the connector there. And then we'll apply the crimp. So that'll make a good electrical contact there. Crimp is good enough for the aerospace industry, it's good enough for me. Okay, so now we'll just slip the heat shrink up over the end of the connector. Let's get my little uh, blowtorch going here. And uh, we'll just uh, form that heat shrink into place. I usually start by uh, shrinking the heat shrink up at the connector first because it tends to shrink sometimes and if you start down here it might pull off of the connector. So, so I've got the heat shrink on there and if you look carefully you can see a little bit of the clear epoxy coming out at the end. So that's kind of the glue that's holding this whole thing together now. So that makes a good solid end for the radio kit. Then you can simply just work your way down the rest of the wire kind of separating into your four groups of three conductors each until you've got you know four individual groups all the way down the length of your ribbon cable. And as we said at the beginning I found that these flat ribbons tend to pretty well resist uh, tangling up and they're easy to kind of just finger out with your fingers to separate out when you're deploying them. And when you go to uh, wrap them back up again I simply will stick it in my fingers and just wrap around my fingers like so to put that kit together and then put a little velcro strap around them to hold them. But very easy to, to wrap up, they're very lightweight and, and super easy to deploy and spread out onto the ground when you're ready to use them. I don't know how well it picks up on camera but this 17-foot uh, kit that I have here is pretty dirty. <laughs> it's been used quite a bit over the years and uh, I just finished making a 34-foot a version of this four-wire you know, ribbon cable based ground radio kit to use more effectively on the lower bands. But uh, this has worked really well for me for years and uh, so I thought I'd uh, share with you you know, the little kit that I make. Again, I found that this ribbon cable uh, is not totally tangle resistant but is very easy to deal with and uh, it, the tangles just kind of come out by running the, the wires through your fingers pretty easily like a comb. And it's lightweight, it throws out and lays on the ground nicely and very easy to coil up when you're finished using it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up and uh, go make yourself a, a nice uh, ground radio kit out of ribbon cable and I think you'll be happy with the results. Thank you.